chapter um, we're in chapter 14 well 13 we're right at the end of 13 a um, couple things I wanted to cover right at the back um, chapter um, 13 was uh, prophecies of Prophecies against the Antichrist kingdom, and it mentions Babylon right there, and we went over what Babylon was. And um, the place of Babylon is the same thing as Babel. If you go straight east of Jordan, Israel, you'll, you'll run in, right across the desert, you'll run right there into Babylon. And, um, and you got that, uh, I want you to see this, um, when the kingdoms of the east come, come to uh, Israel right there in Jerusalem and to t take it in the battle of Armageddon in that valley right there, the Lord saves them. Um, when, he, when he comes in with vengeance on them, you know what they're going to do? I said in, in verse 6 and 18, chapter 13, 6, I didn't mention this, but um, y'all ever shoot a bear? Nobody's ever shot a bear. I ain't either. But what I've heard is when a bear dies, what is he he'll go <laughs> He puts out a death howl. And it says howl of despair. So that's the way it is with the Lord. Now look at thirteen thirteen six. Yeah, nobody's killed a bear. <laughs> That would be a good bucket list right there. How ye for the day of the Lord is at hand, it shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. There shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt. Now, I, that's what I thought of, is uh, when the Lord's on them, it's just like uh, a howl right there of despair. Now, look at... We'll go all the way... We'll pick it up there in verse 19. Verse 19. And, and Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees, excellency, shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, and it shall be inhabited, neither it shall never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation, neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there, neither shall the shepherd make their fold there, but wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and their houses shall be full of doleful creatures, and owls shall dwell there, and satyrs shall dance there, and the wild beasts of the island shall cry in their desolate houses, dragons in their pleasant places, and her time is near to come, and her days shall not be prolonged. Now, it says it's going to be a doleful place and nobody lives there. Now, you ever get into a place where it's just nothing's going on? All right. Um, Jeremiah, he lists Babylon three times in the last chapter, and that's what Babylon is. It's like a dull, God ain't there, it's dead. Um, he mentions it three times. In Revelation 17, it's mentioned the abomination of harlots. Uh, look at Jeremiah 51, 24. Jeremiah 51, 24. It's like the Lord put that area on a shelf, and he says, I'm done with it. 51, 24. Um... Verse 21, And with thee will I break in pieces the horse and in the rider. With thee will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider. With thee also will I break in pieces man and woman. With thee will I break in pieces old and young. And with thee will I break in pieces the young men and the maiden. And I will also break in pieces with thee the shepherd, the flock. And with thee will I break in pieces the husbandmen and his yoke of oxen. With thee will I break in pieces captains and rulers. And I will render unto Babylon that all the inhabitants of the Chaldea all their evil, and they have done in Zion in your sight, saith the Lord. Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, 
saith the Lord, and which destroyeth all the earth, I will stretch out mine hand upon thee and roll thee down from the rocks and will make thee a burnt mountain. So the Lord wipes it out. And um, that'll come up. That'll come up. Uh, and you look at that, and that's the same place, right around the same areas, the, the Tower of Babel and things like that right there. The Lord destroyed it. Um, the Tower of Babel was there. That's another thing about that. And uh, God told Abraham to leave the Chaldees. And we just re and mentioned Chaldees right there in Jeremiah 51. So where does Abraham leave? He starts right there at Chaldee, Ur of the Chaldees. And he goes from, from, e from west to east. No, east to west. I got that direction wrong. He goes from east to west, straight to Jerusalem. And, uh, and that's the direction of the... Dr. Ruppman always teaches us. That's the direction of the Holy Spirit. You see it moving west to east. I said it again, east to west. <laughs> yeah, go west, young man. Go, you, go west. Alrighty, the Tower of Babel was there. So, um, you know what? When the Lord saves you, though, he, he, what did he tell Abraham? He says, get ye up out of thy land. Out of the, thy, get away from your kindred and move west. And, and, he's, and he didn't tell Abraham where to go. You know, when you get saved, you start moving. It's different. You start finding a church and, and, and you move the way the Holy Spirit tells you now. We are not our own. We are bought with a price. Um, so verse, verse 19, In Babylon the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees, excellency shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. And it shall never be inhabited neither shall it be dwelled in from generation to generation. It's likened to Sodom and Gomorrah, a wicked place. And um, if you look right now and just look around us, there, you don't have to look hard and you see that sin. And that's one of the main topics of being a candidate for presidency now. And it's a wicked thing. And if you want to make a nation weak, that's what you, you get into that sin right there and allow it. That makes a, way, a nation weak. And uh, there's, no, and there's no, no sense in that. Um, it's wicked and it's an abomination to the Lord. And God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah for that sin. Um, God told Abraham to leave it. The Tower of Babel was there. Uh, it's likened to Sodom and Gomorrah, Babylon. Uh, and then you look at the wild beast, verse 20. And it shall be, never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelled in from generation to generation, neither shall the Abraham pitch, the Arabian pitch tent there, neither shall the shepherds make their folds there, but wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, their houses shall be full of doleful creatures. Anybody like owls? <laughs> you got owls it's called a dole maybe I shouldn't ask that question <laughs> it's called a doleful creature and it's likened to doleful things it's a night, night animal yep. now um, I use an owl Anthony uses an owl a fake owl to, to wake up a turkey brother Valance Shooting at an owl and at a hay. Boy, I bet he got in trouble. <laughs> that guy's crazy. No, they're out there at the house. I got rabbits and chickens, and them owls. They'll come around. In the, I, I, there was four or five of them right around there, just looking down. They're all in cages, you know, and I'm like. There's an owl. <laughs> You'll hear them. Oh, 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 and they start talking right around in a circle. Yeah. And uh, it's funny. Um, the 
<laughs> and then the turkeys go. Kup, 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 kup. <laughs> but they're woeful creatures, and uh, they're associated. They're, they're they're associated as an unclean fowl. Look at Jeremiah chapter um, fifty thirty nine on the wild beast. Isaiah uh, Jeremiah fifty thirty nine. Therefore the wild beast of the desert with the wild beast of the island shall dwell there, and the owls shall dwell therein, and it shall be no more inhabited for ever, neither shall be dwelled in from generation to generation, as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. So that's the same passage right there. And um, woeful, unclean birds. Um, here's another unclean bird. It lists unclean birds in 11, uh, Le Leviticus 11.16. In Leviticus 11.16. And unclean birds is like unclean spirits. It's likened to them. Leviticus 11.16. And you got to keep the birds away from you. Amen. And the owl, uh, here he's the vulture, the kite after his kind. This is unclean. Verse 13. And these are they which shall have an abomination among the fowls. They shall not be eaten. They are an abomination. The eagle, the osophrage, the osprey, the vulture, the kite after his kind, every raven after his kind, and the owl, and the night hawk, and the cock coo, and the hawk after his kind, and the little owl, and the cormorant, and the great owl. He, he mentions all the owls there. And the swan, and the pelican, and the gear, and the eagle, and the stork, and the heron, and her kind, and the lapwing, and the bat, and all fowls that creep going upon all four. Four shall be an abomination unto you. It didn't mention chicken, no. So we're good. <laughs> uh, Y'all ever hear the the saying, uh, "Eat crow"? I have to eat crow every now and then. They they had a motor, they swap, and I said, nah, "I don't know if that'll work." And it's working fine. I, so I went up to the operator and whoever wrote it up. I said, "I'm eating crow." Have to. Swallow her down, feathers and all. <laughs> but uh, crow, it's an unclean bird. Owls are unclean. Sort of like that joke, um, the guy got in trouble, you know, and he, he killed a, you know, killed an unclean animal, you know, like a hawk. And the warden got all over him and said, what are you doing, man? And, he got he wrote him out a ticket. He went to court and he says, "I just protected my chickens and everything and killed that that hawk." And he says, "Well, I won't let you go because you're protecting your farm. But let me ask you this: What that thing tastes like anyway? Because he ate it. <laughs> so it's sort of like a bald eagle." <laughs> Unclean critters, you better watch it. <laughs> yeah, you gotta watch it. I'll tell you what, they're pretty um they're pretty strict about that. You don't want to kill one of them. I know in Tennessee my brother caught a caught a wounded one and he put it in a cage. He called the DNR and had him come get it. And um but you're not supposed to kill them. And uh, you got to, I know they're, they're chicken hawks and things like that. And I, I don't like chicken hawks, especially if you have chickens. Okay, you have wild beasts, unclean birds. Uh, they're likened to unclean spirits. Look at Isaiah chapter 34, 14. 34, 14. I know one time we, we come up when I was a kid, and I'll never forget this. We come up on an owl, and that thing, and I know I was younger. I probably wasn't as tall as I am now, but it looked like that thing was four foot tall. It's just sitting in the creek, 
and something was wrong with it, but his head would go all the way around and look at you. And I was like, hey. my brothers are saying, better stay away from that thing. That thing can tear you up. We just walked around and just watched it. Uh, but owls, it's like an unclean spirit. It's Isaiah chapter 34, verse 6. Um, I think I'm looking for verse 14. The wild beast of the desert shall also meet with the wild beast of the island. The satyr shall cry to his fellow, and the screech owl shall rest there and find for herself a place of rest. There shall the great owl make her nest and lay hatch and gather under her shadow. There shall the vultures gather every one with her mate. And um, the Bible says the Lord's going to gather the unclean birds. And I always get a little creeped out when I see a bunch of buzzards hanging around. I don't, I don't like that. I shoot my, we got a pretty good dog, though. He's a little off in the head. But every time him and my other dog see a bird up there, they're, they're off after that thing. I mean, it don't matter if that thing's half a mile up in the air. <laughs> and... Uh, it's pretty neat. He keeps the buzzards away. Um, all right, verse 22. Verse 22. And the wild beasts of the islands shall cry in their desolate houses, and dragons in their pleasant places, and her time, and her time is near to come, and her days shall not be prolonged. Um, another note on them, right there, the, the vulture and the, the unclean bird... Did y'all notice if you read on Noah's Ark, he, he sent out a raven and then he sent out a dove? And the old raven didn't come back. You know what old raven will do? He'll just land on a dead carcass and eat that. A dove didn't it. A dove come back. A dove come back with a green, all, all, you know, a green shrub right there. What was it? An olive? Olive branch? Yeah. A dove come back with an olive branch. Um, so the dove is likened to a good spirit, the Holy Spirit, and it's alive. The old raven, the old birds, the unclean birds, the unclean spirits is likened to demons and unclean spirits. Okay, now we got... Um, the well, yes, sir. The satire. Okay. That, in verse 22, the wild beast of the islands shall cry in their desolation, houses, dragons in their pleasant place, and their time to come. I think it mentions the satire in 21. Yeah. Uh, doleful creatures, owls shall dwell there, and satire shall dance there. Now, I don't know. That is like a goat, half goat and half man creature is what I think it is. Now it's a wicked, it's like a, it's a, it's an evil, it's, it's like an evil creature. That's what, let me see, I think Dr. Ruckman has a note on that. Yeah. Um, and if Bartholomew, I think if you look at um, that goat, I think that's in the Masonic thing. That's likened to it right there. And it's like an evil spirit thing. Um, what's that note right there in Dr. Ruckman's note? I think it's right here. Appendix 55. I'll go right over there. Uh, that's on unicorns and dragons. Um, I don't see that that one though on that animal, but he mentions it there somewhere. Goat-shaped devils. That's what Doctor Ruckman says about it. Um, I, I do know that it's associated with bad spirits and the devils right there. And see where it's unclean. 
um, you get them creatures, and, and if you get into um, the old folklore where the, the um, I'm trying to think of what do you call it, Osiris, the sun gods, and what mythology, you'll find them satyrs like that in mythology right there. Um, I'll tell you what, and if you watch your movies, all that stuff is brought out. All of it is. You'll see it in the in the witchcraft and all that stuff. And it's a it's a bad spirit. It's a bad spirit. And I want to tell you something. When God ain't nowhere around, and you you're around all that, and, and you don't find God nowhere around, you get that spirit. It's the same spirit, and it's um, dead. It's a dead cough. We're right around Halloween right now. You look around, and you ever notice the the music goes along with it and everything else. If you ever notice them guys that want to put tattoos on them. Now I'm going to hit tattoos. I'm I'm against them. I know it's the th everybody has them. But the first thing they want to do is they want to put old devil on there. They want to put a skull on there somewhere and just stuff like that. And I look at it and you know, bike riders do that. Yeah. <laughs> they have that on there. Now, I, I'm getting into it. Uh, she, we, we, she, we like to ride. <laughs> but I ain't going to put no skull on my bike. <laughs> or on the back of my leather jacket, you know. <laughs> um, but uh, they put all that in there. And why in the world do we want to revolve around dead things? And that's what... Um, Halloween's all about. They put skulls up everywhere. And, and it's deader than 4 o'clock. And uh, they want to do all this. They, they get power through, through the devil, but it's not real light. It's death. God's not there. It's a dead thing. Dead, unclean spirit. And you'll get all that in a... The, it mentions him in that. Look at Jeremiah. I think we did... Um, Jeremiah 50, 51, 37, I think I read that. Look at, um, we could go, I can read a little bit of this about the unicorn and the dragon. Appendix 55 from the Ruckman Bible. It says, two fossils of legend snakes found in the limestone quarry in Israel were examined by Michael W. Caldwell of the University of Alberta and Michael S. Y. Lee of the University of Sydney Australia Biblical Archaeology Review. In 1997, the prospect of a snake with legs is not as improbable as it might seem to have its first appearance. Um, that means it's they found fossils of a dragon with legs and stuff like that. That's pretty wild. And you can find fossils of the, and they call it dinosaurs and things like that, but I believe a dragon's different. I believe it's there's dra I believe if it's in the Bible and the devil is likened to the dragon. And um, you go over there, the dragon, Apollyon. And then you look over here at verse um, twelve. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Thou this weakened the that's likened to the devil, the dragon is. And uh, you got it mentioned right here. So um them doleful creatures or things that are likened to the, the devil, you better watch out for them. Um, they're doleful. The wild beasts of the islands shall cry in their desolate houses, the dragons in their pleasant places. I think there's a note right. The, cry in their desolate places, the dragons... And it says, see Appendix 55. And then it mentions some other things on dragons there if you want to read it in the Ruckman Bible. But um, dragons are a um, type of the devil there. Apollyon. Look at Jeremiah 9, 9-11. Jeremiah 9-11.
You ever notice too how they come out with these little um, little cartoons where the where the kids are riding the dragons? You got Dungeon and Dragons, and you got and you're getting people familiar with dragons. And uh, I'll tell you what, the devils. You getting getting them familiar with them where they does they don't look them as a they got good dragons and bad dragons you know what I mean and uh, to me they're all bad Amen. it's all bad um, Jeremiah nine nine verse eleven and I will make Jerusalem heaps and den of dragons and I will make the cities of Judah desolate without inhabitant now there's a note that Doctor Ruckman says right there. He, he says the new Bible's change, it, it changes. And then he'll change it to like a lizard or a dinosaur. And then, then before you know it, when it mentions wild beasts, it's jackals. So they did plumb away with the dragons. And King James keeps that word in there. And I believe it's, you need to take it literal. You need to take it literal. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, they do. Yep, the dragon killer. You got it all in. You got it on the walls, and uh, we, there's archaeology written about them. All right, look at ten twenty-two. Ten. You don't have to look far to find them. Ten twenty-two. Behold, the noise. I don't know. The new Bible's changing because they think that's you know past and they figure it. If no, you don't. I take it literal. Behold, the noise of the brute. Is come great commotion out of the north country to make the cities of Judah desolate a den of dragons. There's you, you got dragons again right there. Look at Job, um, Job thirty twenty five, Job thirty twenty five. Now here's some places of the dragons. Thirty twenty five. Did not I weep for him that was in trouble? Was not my soul greed for proof when I looked for good? Then evil came unto me, and when I waited for light, there came darkness. My bowels boiled, rested not, days of prevention. Uh, congregation, I am a brother to drag. That's where I'm looking at. I went mourning without the sun. I stood up, I cried in the congregation. I am a brother to dragons and a companion to owls. See there? And there's a note right there on, on that. Verses 29 and 30 are references to Jesus uh, Christ becoming sin for the sinner. Christ is so identified with sin on the cross that he is called a serpent. John 3.14 That is why he is likened to dragons. Revelation 12.9 And owls which are unclean birds. And see also comments on Isaiah 34, 11 through 15. And modern Bibles do away with dragons to cover up for Satan. Just like the NIV covers up for him in Isaiah 14, 12. Now if you um, study about, we're getting into Lucifer and Satan. 